Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about knowledge while we take a look at the story of someone whose straight talk sent them straight to jail. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about knowledge, which is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. Okay, so what are we learning about today? Not what, who? Oh, great, we have a guest? Yep. Today's guest is a super scholar. In fact, their brain power is about twice what a normal person has. Wait, I know who we're talking about. That famous person who won that quiz show like 70 times? Nope. Oh, uh, an NASA engineer. Nuh-uh. Well, uh, some professor? Oh, my uh, science teacher, Miss Grimes, is like a genius. Maybe, but that's not who we're talking to. All right, who is this super brain? Ta-da! Wait, we're talking to a... A baby? Well, a toddler. She's my niece, and her name is Eloise. No offense to your niece, but how is she a mega brain about anything except goldfish? Actually, toddlers are incredible. Two-year-olds have twice as many brain connections as adults. Wait, seriously? Mm-hmm. A toddler's brain produces more than one million neural connections every second. Because these connections are where learning occurs, they allow a two-year-old to learn faster than anyone else. That's amazing. I know, right? Okay, let's talk to this little genius. Can you tell me what's your name? Eloise. How old are you, Eloise? Three. Three? Three. That, that is, is a big number. Can you tell me what's your favorite color, Eloise? Orange. Oh, orange. orange. Uh, mm. I love orange it's an too. It's awesome color and I love orange. What a coincidence. That's awesome. I love orange. What's your favorite animal? Nay. Nay? Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Nay, nay, oh, her horse. Yeah, that's the name yes. of your horse. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. What's your favorite food? Pancakes. 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 Mm. I love pancakes. Do you, like, do you like syrup and waffles with it? Yeah. What's better, pancakes or waffles? Oh, be very waffles. careful how you answer. Oh, waffles! waffles. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? A farmer. A farmer. A farmer. That is awesome. <laughs> hmm, Eloise, can you tell me what's your opinion in the current state of the world? Mommy. Mommy? Mm, okay, Makes yeah. sense. Should ask her and stuff. Mm -hmm. Wise words. Wise words. <laughs> hey, Eloise, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Do you want to go get a lollipop? Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I still have so many questions. <laughs> You're not the only one. It's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the first book of the New Testament, Matthew. But before Matthew, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into a relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. God sent another special baby named John to a priest named Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth. Even before John was born, an angel told his father Zechariah that John would point people to God, which is exactly what John did. And that's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone. John was a uh, unique kind of guy. He wore rough clothing made from camel skins, and for food, he scavenged crunchy locusts and ate honey from wild bees. John preached to crowds by the Jordan River, calling them to turn back to God. Then he dipped them into the waters and drew them up again as a sign of their changed hearts. I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I am will come. I'm not good enough to untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Then Jesus himself came down to the Jordan River and asked John to baptize him. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. As Jesus emerged dripping from the waters, heaven opened up. 
John saw God's Spirit rest on Jesus as a dove. They heard God's voice from heaven. This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. If John had any doubts about who Jesus was, it seems they would have been washed away in that very moment. I mean, he heard God's actual voice. Soon after, John pointed to Jesus and cried out, Look, the Lamb of God, he takes away the sin of the world. After 40 days in the wilderness alone with God, Jesus began to gather followers and to teach and heal people. John gladly pointed his own disciples to follow Jesus instead. I am not the Messiah. I was sent ahead of him. He must become more important. I must become less important. Now, John didn't stop his own teaching, though, and he didn't sugarcoat the truth, even when speaking to powerful leaders. In fact, John came head to head with Herod, the Roman appointed ruler of Galilee. You have broken God's laws. You. You locust eater! I can do whatever I want! Herod was so angry, he had John thrown in prison. John, who was used to wind and sky, was now confined to narrow walls in dim light. He heard only snatches of news from the outside when his followers were allowed to visit him. Jesus healed a woman who's been sick for 12 years! He even brought a little girl back to life! Instead of encouraging John, the news he heard began to weigh on him, especially as the months ticked by. One, two, three, four, five, six. Soon John had been behind bars for, well, maybe as long as a year. All kinds of questions and doubts began to creep into his heart, like the rats that skittered across his cell floor at night. When is Jesus going to start getting rid of the Romans? What about that new kingdom that was supposed to come? If Jesus is really the Messiah, why am I still stuck here? The questions gnawed away inside of John, even though he had actually heard God's voice he began to grow sick with doubt. Finally, John sent several of his followers to Jesus with a cry straight from the heart. John's followers found Jesus surrounded by an eager crowd. And as Jesus touched each sick person, illness dropped away. People blind or deaf from birth could see and hear in an instant. John's followers squeezed through to make themselves heard. Please, Jesus, John wants to know, are you the one who is supposed to come? Or, or should we look for someone else? Now, Jesus could have been annoyed with John for asking more questions and needing assurance. Instead, Jesus offered clear evidence of God's work. Go back to John. Report to him what you hear and see. Blind people receive sight. Disabled people walk. Those who have skin diseases are made clean. Deaf people hear. Those who are dead are raised to life, and the good news is preached to those who are poor. Blessed is anyone who does not give up their faith because of me." We don't know exactly how John responded when he received this compassionate message from Jesus, but he could know that Jesus wasn't angry or annoyed about the questions. Those words must have been a, a breath of fresh air for John. He was still in prison, but he could have the comfort of knowing that Jesus hadn't forgotten him. And then in the midst of a, of a clamoring crowd, Jesus had stopped to send a message crafted just for John. So, wow. John had actually heard God speak from heaven, and he still wasn't sure? Yeah, I mean, it's super easy to forget and start doubting no matter what we see or hear. Even when things don't go our way. Yep but God will never get angry with us for asking. In fact, Jesus' brother James wrote this, if any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find fault. That is awesome. So what's our part in the story? Maybe you want to know why your grandma has been in the hospital for so long. It's totally okay to tell God how you feel about it. 
and ask God for help. Yeah, God might not make your grandma better in the way or time you expect, but God can still give you peace in your heart. It might be that you want to know why your dad lost his job, or why you have to go to a new school. Or even why you still struggle with tying your shoes. God will welcome all of your questions with love and compassion. In fact, it's okay to ask a question about anything at all. Like when your teacher had just explained something about fractions or how an engine works and your head is spinning. Yeah, I usually just slide down to my seat and hope I'll figure it out later because I don't want to make a fool of myself. But when that happens, ask. You'll be glad you did. And your teacher will be too. I think you got it. Don't be afraid to ask. See you next time. So here's the thing. If you don't understand something, ask. Hey, can we take Eloise to the park? I need to up my peekaboo game. That's a great idea. Me too. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you See next, next time. time.